Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel. This is Nathan Daly. I'm your law enforcement translator. Some say the TLO, the lead officer. I like them both, you guys. We're gonna run with it. Uh, listen, um, shout out to my subscribers. Those who are new to the channel, welcome. If you guys are interested in joining the channel, please join and support the channel. If you'd love to donate and support the channel, please, by all means, check out my cash app at the bottom. Would love your support. It goes a long way, you guys, for the building of this channel. Please subscribe. If you haven't subscribed yet, you guys, we are working towards getting to 10,000 subscribers and we are close. I mean, we're at 6,000, but you know, we're making moves. Uh, so <laughs> shout out to poor man's podcast. He has this saying, he says, uh, give him the HBO special. Seems like it's been working for him. It's the help a brother out special. I'm about to steal that from him. Uh, so listen, you guys, what are we talking about? We're talking about this uh, case I was covering um, just this few days ago about the six month year old baby uh, male, the infant, Grayson Fleming Gray, who was tragically killed in a drive by shooting. They arrested the shooter, right? They arrested him. And his name is Dequazy Jonathan Little. So they arrested him. This fool decided to go into a community, into a neighborhood in Atlanta. And while he was driving well, in the passenger side of the car, he takes a gun outside the window and he shoots. He shoots. He shoots up a vehicle. And unfortunately, in him doing that, that act of violence and complete foolish behavior, ignorant behavior, a bullet went through a vehicle that had a child in it. And that child died. You know, um, so there was a massive investigation and manhunt for this gentleman. They found him and they arrested him. So yesterday they arrested his accomplice, or one would say someone who's a party to the crime. Her name is Sharice Ingram, 22 years old. She turned herself in. She was the getaway driver, right? She drove him there to commit the crime. And unbeknownst to them, one of those bullets end up striking an infant. You guys, how does this work? From a law enforcement perspective, you guys, that's as good as murder for her too, though she never pulled the trigger. She never had to, right? We're talking party to a crime. What does that mean? She participated, she engaged, she encouraged, she influenced in some form or fashion. She knew or should have known that he was there to commit a crime. She took him there. You guys, she's 22 years old, and I believe uh, he's also 22 years old as well. You guys, they just threw their entire life in the trash can. Welcome to prison. Welcome to life in prison. They're going to do a lot of time. They're going to do a lot of time behind this incident. You guys, this is what's interesting. I'm going to talk about and tell you some stories about women committing murder, women committing offenses, or women who were there as support, the wingman for the foolishness and ignorant behaviors of their boyfriends or their male family members or men in period. How women end up attaching themselves to the foolishness that some of these men do and they wind up in prison for a long time and almost the rest of their lives. I told people this before. Someone asked me about women and women and the crimes they commit. And I say, ah, oftentimes, oftentimes when women commit crimes, a man or a male figure is usually associated with their stupid behavior. Somehow been enticed or influenced into supporting or committing a crime. That leaves them in prison. So, <laughs> Sharice is 22 years old. A lot of times, and I've seen this before, I've arrested plenty of women who were the getaway drivers for, for these guys who were committing crimes. Or, they help these guys commit fraud or robbery, burglary. How did they do it? They use themselves as lookouts, right? Because when women are involved in crime, on average, people are less suspicious. They're less suspicious. But what the women don't realize is they never have to do the crime to be charged with it. We charge them all the time. I want to pull up some data for you guys, too, because sometimes people don't realize Pull up something from the FBI crime report. I want you guys to know this. When it comes to murder offenders, I'm looking at the 2019 crime report. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the, uh, the reference, the resource, in the description section, you guys, so you can take a look at it on your own. 
And what I'm looking at, this is arrest. This is in 2019 by gender. If we look at here, I highlighted it. How many females, and, and of course, this is black and white. We're looking at women in general. We're going to break down um, ethnicities. But for right now, we're looking at black and white. Over 1 million, 1.9 million females have been arrested, just in general. And then what we have, if we really break down and go to the next line before I highlighted that as well, how many for murder? In 2019, 922 women have been arrested for murder. Now when you see the male counterparts, 6,789 for murder. Listen, you guys, this is the thing. Women are out here committing the offense. Obviously, it pales in comparison to men. But how do women get involved in it? I tell you, in all of my cases that I've seen it happen, only a few times where I've arrested women for actual aggravated assault, right, or murder, whether it was against another woman or against a man or a male had something to do with it, right? They murdered that woman for what? Because, right, maybe it was a domestic issue. Maybe the man was cheating. Maybe it was the, the third wheel, that, that uh, the ex-girlfriend or something to that effect. But a male, the man was a core, the core root of the problem. Or where else have I seen it? Seeing women run another person over, trying to get away from a crime scene. That was orchestrated by maybe their boyfriend or maybe a brother, right? There's always that influence, a male influence. And not saying, I'm not saying that women can't con commit these crimes on their own. But it's, 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 you just don't see it as much. Where they just woke up and decided to just come out here and wreak havoc. You don't see it as much. In all the cases that I've seen, there's always been some sort of male uh, influence or male attachment to it. To some form, some form or fashion. Why do I say that? Why do I bring this up? Because essentially following behind this fool, she's just doomed herself, right? All right. I said all that to say this. I'm going to give you a little story, right? A few years back, I was working a narcotics investigation, and we were stopping this vehicle that we knew had drugs in it. And we knew that the dealer was in the car. He was a passenger. His girlfriend, child's mother, was the driver. They had their child in the back seat of the car, in the child seat. So we stopped the vehicle. Cool. We separate everybody, put them on the curb. And as we're searching the vehicle, I located a large cookie, as we would call it, a cookie of crack cocaine. We tested it, came out positive for crack cocaine. They were in the process to go deliver these drugs. And so as I'm talking to them, I said, hey, listen, ma'am, you're the driver. Everything in this vehicle you're responsible for, you're accountable for. I said, whose drugs are these? Right? The male, her boyfriend, was silent, didn't say anything. She said, it's not mine. I said, well, if it's not yours, who's this? I said, sir, are these yours? He said, nah, it's not mine. <laughs> so, of course, I laughed, right? So I said, well, listen, unfortunately, you guys, if no one claims these drugs, I'm, I'm going to be forced to take both of you to jail and charge you with possession of crack cocaine. Now, mind you, there's a problem. There's a child in the back seat, right? There's a child. Maybe what? Child was probably what two, infant in the car seat. Babies are crying. The baby's crying in the back seat. I said, "Listen, you guys, what do you want to do?" I said, "Is anybody who can come pick the child up?" They said, "No, we don't have any family here. There's nobody who can pick the child up." I said, "Listen, don't put me in a situation where I have to call DFAX. Now I got to call DFAX, and I'm looking because I know whose drugs it is. I know who the drugs belong to." So the man said to me, he said, listen, I'm not taking that charge. It's not mine. He looks at his child's mother. And she started crying. And she said, officer, that's my crack cocaine. Right? <laughs> As an officer, what do I do? Right? I have, I have that confession. I have that. That statement, I have that, hey, this is mine, this ownership. She took it. She took it. And I said, okay. I looked at him, and I'm like, all right. Listen, I get it. I understand. I understand. So 
I took her, put her in the back of my patrol car. And I said, well, I have to finish going through this thing. I said, listen, sir, I can't release the car to you because your license is suspended. You can't even drive the car. So I said, I'm keeping the car. I said, so we need someone who can come and get this child. Right? I said, is anybody, maybe a friend you can call? I said, yeah, I could probably call someone. I said, okay. Mind you, he's still in handcuffs. So I go back into the vehicle, and I'm going through the vehicle even further. Obviously, because we have drugs in it that magnitude, I got to look deeper. So I'm turning the car inside out. Something said to me, check the car seat. The mom said, hey, can I, can I at least hold my child just a little bit longer before I go? I said, yeah, not a problem. Put the handcuffs in front of her, put her in the back seat, right? And mind you, I have my corgis here, you guys. The scene is safe. Everything is safe. What do I do? I bring her the child. Something said, check the car seat. You guys, I start checking the car seat. And I pull back. I pull back the fabric. I pull back the cushion, all of that. And there's a gun. There's a gun inside the car seat with the barrel facing upwards. You guys, listen. I'm furious at this point. I'm mad. Why am I mad? You could have hit the gun anywhere else in the car and you put it behind your child. What if when I was reaching down for the baby to pull the baby and trying to get the baby out of the car seat, I accidentally hit the trigger, right? And the gun goes off. Hits me or hits the baby. You guys, who knows? Who knows what could have happened? You guys, I was pissed. So I come back. I get out the car and I said, well, Abra effing Cadabra. What is this? What is this, right? I'll never forget that, you guys, because that one in that moment is my first time ever stopping a vehicle where I had to search it. And there was a child in there in a car seat that I had to search my first time ever. And uh, that was a learning lesson. Check everything, right? So I said, Abra, F and Cadabra. I said, all right. In that moment, you see the gentleman, he's sitting on the curb. He throws his head down. He's like, shh. He's like, bruh, I don't know where that came from, <laughs> right? Of course. He said, it's not mine. I said, well, how did a pistol get in the car seat behind your child? And who put it there, passenger? Who put it there? I don't, I don't know how I got there. I said, all right. So let me ask your girl. So I go over to her. I get her out the car, sit her back down. I say, hey, listen, whose pistol is this? And she said in the moment, she said, I don't, she said, I don't know. She said, it's not mine. She said, it's not mine. I said, listen, you guys. Listen, it's not against the law to have a gun. Right? It's not against the law. Unless you yourself are not allowed to have one, right? As a convicted felon. Other than that, I said, it's no big deal. I said, I'm more so upset that someone stashed it behind the baby. She said, officer, the gun is mine. I said, okay. I said, well, listen, I'm not gonna charge you for the gun, it's not. I said, are you a convicted felon? She said, no. I said, well, then you can have the gun, right? I go back and I run the gun. I run the serial numbers, you guys. This is what we do. We always do it a standard procedure. We unload it, right? We, we look at it. We run the serial number. I ran the serial number, you guys. The gun was stolen. It was stolen out of a different county. It was stolen in a burglary. Hmm. You guys, that's a felony. That's a felony. So I said, listen, ma'am. Here's the problem. The gun is stolen. The gun is stolen. I'm about to charge you with that as well. She starts crying. And then she starts looking at 
her boyfriend. She didn't say anything to him. He puts his head down and he starts breathing heavy. He's, <sighs> right? The moment when the suspect does that, I know what time it is. So I said, listen, ma'am, you know, I'm about to charge you for this gun and the crack cocaine. You're going to be in for a while. So I picked her up again. And I looked at the boyfriend and I called him a coward. I said, you're a coward. Walked to the car, put it back in the car. As I'm coming back a few minutes later, he says, officer, 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 can I, can I talk to you for a second? I said, yeah, what's up? He's like, it's my officer. I said, what? <laughs> when suspects do that whisper, you know, so they're trying to get it off the chest. He's like, it's, it's my officer. It's my. I said, what? What did you say? Speak up. Speak up. He said, officer, it's my gun. It's my crack cocaine. I said, you don't say. You don't say. He said, she was going to take the charge for me because I just got out of prison. I'm on parole. I can't go back to prison. I'm in violation. I said, is that so? I said, so you're going to let your, your child's mother take the charge. You're going to let her go to jail. You're going to let her do all that. Because of the decisions that you made. She was willing to do it, you guys. She was willing to do it. You know, and so... When I spoke to her about it, I said, listen, he confessed and said it was all his. You know, she started crying. And she said, well, you know, I was just trying to have his back. Because he can't afford to go back. He's making money for us. He's making money for us. That's what she said. You know, you guys, I understand, and this is what goes on in our communities, right? These are the investigations. These are the encounters that I've had in our community. Now, listen, I understand. But I don't agree with the methods, right? He just got out of prison. He's back out doing the exact same thing. He had a list of drug offenses. Issues with the police, obstruction, running away, fleeing and attempting to elude. He had all these charges. They're all drug-related charges. So, you know, this is how women get caught up. This is how women get caught up. She was willing to take that felony charge for him. You know, I have cases where women would, would set men up to get robbed. Listen, we hear this thing, too. We hear it from Cardi B. She said it, too. This is a celebrity. What'd she say? She has drugged. And rob men. Women do this, and they do this under the teachings, the tutelage, the guidance of their men and the men that they associate with. You guys, I've seen every time I've had to arrest a woman for a high violent related crime or drug related crime, they always had some male affiliation. They're never doing it on their own. You know? So when I see this case now with this woman as the getaway driver, as her male friend or boyfriend, shoots out the window in a drive-by, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Clown behavior. And we wonder why we're in the circus, you guys. You wonder why we're in the circus. How did we get here? 38% of us, 38% of the prison population is African-American. You guys were 13% of the population. Females represent 6%, right? of the black community, 6% in this nation. How much did they make up of the prison? You know, females just in general, just in general make up 6.5% of the prison population. 6.5. You know, so again, um, it's tragic. It's foolish. What they did was so, so reckless. And for what? And for what? They threw their lives away. They've taken a life, changed the family for the rest of their life. You know, the mother of that child, she'll never be the same again. She'll never be the same again. Taken from senseless violence, you guys. So, I don't know. That's the update, you guys. Let me know your thoughts. Um, I mean, I know how you feel about it. 
and how you feel about it. Where do we make change at? Where do we make change? I think at the end of the day, this is the question we all need to be asking. A lot of our inner cities are just riddled with violence from our community. You know, so anyways, you guys like, comment, share and subscribe. And with that, good night. God bless.